What's up guys, Shane here, Figure Deck 3D Printing, and today I'm going to show you how to set up Simplify 3D for your Folger Tech FT5. Now, you can use this tutorial for a lot of different uh, printers out there, but I am specifically making this one for the guys in the Folger Tech Facebook group for the Folger Tech FT5. So as you can see here, we're totally blank, we have no processes, no models loaded in, and we have a default build plate in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to Help, and we're going to go into Configuration Assistant. Now for me, this takes just a minute to uh, pop up. Okay, so once we have the configure system loaded, we're gonna go ahead and hit the drop down. And if you're using the latest and greatest version of Simplify 3D, you can scroll down and you will find the Folger Tech FT5. Go hit okay on that, hit next, great, happy printing, hit finish. Now, there it goes, it has resized my build plate to be the size. Now, most printers are gonna be oriented in this way, with your home position being the front left of the printer. That is not the case with the FT5, unless you've changed it, but with the stock machine, the back right is actually your home position. So keep that in mind when you're orienting your prints on here, because if you're printing them this way and they're fronting and they're facing you, well, if you look at it while it's printing, it's printing backwards. So let's go in here to the process. You can double click it or hit edit process. And let's take a look at what the default settings are. So I already have my FT5. We're here in the brand new profile under PLA. So the very first one is they have nozzle diameter is 0.4, extrusion multiplier 0.9. So a lot of people ask what extrusion multiplier is. This is the percentage of your extrusion rate. So how fast your filament is coming out, this is a percentage of that. So we're dialing it down 10%, so it's not all the way up there. And we're gonna keep the extrusion width at auto. Now this will change and you have to do calibrations in order to figure out the extrusion multiplier that works for you. If we go here and look at what my FT5 is, it is at 0.83. Now I have a E3D Titan and A3D V6 on there, so that will be different, but we're doing this for the stock machine. We'll leave it at 0.9 and then you guys will adjust for that. If you want to, you can go up to one and work down, but leaving it at 0.9 is a good starting point. Retraction at one millimeter and 30 millimeters per second is good. I prefer 40 millimeters per second personally, so that is what I recommend that you do as well. All right, let's go here to layer. So point two is what you should be doing for pretty much any print for standard quality. You're not doing high quality, you're not doing low quality. It is just going to be the standard. Almost everybody prints and slices and creates models for point two layer height. Three top, three bottom, two perimeter. That is standard for me on any print unless I'm looking for something stronger. If I know the top layer is going to have issues, I'll crank this up. If I'm doing a very low infill, you'll want to crank up your top layers. So different things you'll have to consider. Now also, your first layer settings are going to have to be calibrated by you. No one can tell you what it should be because if you don't have your bed level, it's just going to be bad. So once you get your bed really level, and I'll have another video on how to level your bed, but once you get it to that paper, you know, just feeling a little bit of tug on it in all four of your corners and the middle, you're then set. You'll have to play around with these first layer settings. I have a video which I'll show up here, and you can go ahead and figure out what your first layer settings should be. So here we're using a skirt brim. I'm using this to prime my nozzle. So I like having at least two or three skirt outlines, and I like to keep it at least five millimeters away from the print. Now, depending on how much support you have on your print, you might want to jack this up to 10 or even 15 millimeters simply because you don't want your support to have to print support, go the other side of your skirt, and then print more little pieces of support. I've noticed that when I print my maker coin, so I've now increased mine to a 10 millimeter radius. That way, it is not in the way of the support layers. Infill, personally for me, I love Fast Honeycomb. It prints faster than Rectilinear. I believe it is stronger, and it also looks so much cooler than just a bunch of lines back and forth, so why not do it? We're gonna leave the infill at Rectilinear. Infill percentage, again, you can either slide up here, or you can just type it in right here. 20 is a pretty good default. If you're really worried about uh, how heavy a print's gonna be or whatnot, you can play with this, and when you prepare to print, you can uh, look at how much filament you're actually gonna be using, and you can adjust from there. Your extrusion width is 100%. Go ahead and leave it at that. If you're noticing that your your uh, infill is not thick enough as you're watching your print, go ahead and pack this up a little bit and we'll see how it goes from there. Default, 
default. We don't want to touch any of that. Okay, support is when you need support. Now for the FT5 is just like any other printer really when it comes to support, it's just on the slicer that you're using. If you're going to enable support, your support infill percentage 30 is good, dense at 70. I would have you add a 0.5 millimeter inflation distance. This is simply so there's a little bit extra outside of the print that you can grab on and pull it off in one nice big chunk and not have any issues there. And dense support layers, if you're gonna have a really big, long, flat surface that's gonna print on top of a ton of support. So for example, the the new arm that I printed for the Monoprice Select Mini needed a ton of support under it in order to achieve a nice flat. I upped this to two or three dense support layers, and those will be 70%. Those will ensure that when you put down that first layer, it is like printing on the base of your printer. It will come out absolutely perfect. So play with these settings on what works for you and what you need to worry about for that print that you're working on. This changes every print, so make sure you check this stuff out. Temperature, if you're gonna be printing PLA, which is what we're gonna talk about here, bed temperature is 60. Your extruder, for me, I usually print at 205 for PLA or 210. I like printing hotter. I believe it makes a stronger print and I can print a lot faster, which is what we're looking for. The FT5 is made to print fast. Upping your temperature will make it so that you can print faster. If you're printing at 190, trying to print 100 millimeters a second, it's just not gonna happen. You're gonna grind out because the hot end cannot melt plastic fast enough to achieve those print speeds. So always keep that in mind. For cooling, well, if you have the FT5, you should have printed out a part cooling fan. So there's several of them out there. Lots of people made different ones for the uh, stock machine. And you're gonna want that to turn on at 100% on your second layer. Don't do it on your first layer. We'll make sure that first layer stays nice and hot as it sits down there and then it cools so it remains flat on your build plate. But then at layer two, or some people say layer three or layer five even, to start your print cooling fan. That's everyone's opinion. Mine is layer two, start that sucker up. Everything else in here, we're leaving it as default. The G code, now this is where you're gonna to wanna to play because I tell you right now, your build volume is not quite at 300 by 300 by 400. Your Z is actually gonna end up being just a little shy of that, like 398. So just so you're aware, and your X and Y also are gonna be a little bit shallow of that. If you're upgrading your nozzle, to a E3D style or a different shuttle. A lot of people like the Franken shuttle, all kinds of different ones out there. You're gonna to wanna to go back and recalibrate these to ensure you're getting the max volume that you can get out of your printer. Always be sure, never change global G-code offsets or any of your tool head offsets. Leave all of that absolutely blank, origin offset. Leave all that at zeros, otherwise you're gonna have some funky stuff going on with your printer. Just leave all that alone. Okay, for scripts. Now this is a really good one. This is actually going to go ahead and give you a small amount primed into the nozzle. I personally don't use any of this simply because I use the skirt to prime it. I don't feel that you need to prime and do a skirt together. So I would recommend doing either doing this to prime your nozzle or using the skirt to prime your nozzle. Again, my personal preference is the skirt because I can check my bed level while it's printing the skirt. If I need to make any little adjustments on my corners, I can go ahead and do that real quick. Ending script, this is all fine and dandy, but they are missing the one crucial one, which is M107. And this turns off fan. So that is your part cooling fan. You wanna make sure that's turned off simply because it doesn't need to run. The print's done. You've already homed the printer, motor's disabled, nothing's running. Why have this fan to continue to run? Now your actual hot end, or your, I'm sorry, your extruder fan will remain on. This is just for your print cooling fan. So it would still cool the extruder to make sure you don't have anything, uh, issues going on in there, which can happen if you stop the cooling, but you can go ahead and turn off your part cooling one off. Okay, and here is where we're gonna look at our default print settings. Again, if you're printing at the very bottom end of PLA, you are going to have to print slower. Now, if you wanna print faster, so if you wanna go up to 80 or even 100 millimeters a second, you need to bump up that temperature because you have to give the filament time to melt in the hot end and then down out the nozzle so you can achieve those kind of speeds. 60 is a really good number to start at when you're just starting out printing, actually even 40 is really good for your first few prints just to make sure you have all your settings right and whatnot. Then go ahead and bump that at by 10 each increment, each different test you do until you achieve what you feel is the max for your printer. 
A lot of this is dependent on you, so please make sure you check all that out. Outline under speed, solid infill, support, all of this stuff is great to leave just the way it is. There's no reason to change any of that. The nice thing about Simplify 3D is it defaults at 1.75 millimeters. If you're in Cura, at least the old versions, used to default to three millimeters because it's for an Ultimaker. But nowadays, I believe some of the new versions do default to 1.75, but again, always check that. Normally, if you have any funny extrusion issues, go right to this setting, it might be set wrong. So please check that out. Filament price, I always print with cheap stuff. 20 bucks is a pretty good average. And this is just to kind of give you an estimate of how much it actually costs to print that part. It's not 100% accurate, but it's pretty close. In our advanced tab for the FT5, totally leave this default. You really don't need to change much. The actual profile that they now have in Simplify 3D is decent. I do think it does require these extra few little tweaks. And this will get you started again. A lot of this depends on you and your calibration. So remember, calibrate, calibrate, calibrate that printer. There's a lot of things to do, your X, Y steps. Z steps usually pretty good. You need to calculate your E steps. Then you have to calculate your extrusion multiplier. You wanna figure out your first layer height and width settings, what works out well for you. Then you wanna come over here into the speed settings and up your speed, see if you can change that by upping your speed. Check your temperature settings, make sure those are spot on. I'm gonna do another video here soon on how to do a temp calibration tower so that you can figure out what the best temperature is for the speed that you're printing at for your printer. Doesn't matter what printer it is, the FT5 or anything else, that'll give you a great starting point so you can figure out what you need to do. And then once you hit OK, all of those settings are now saved into your process one here. And you can always go back and add another one if you need to. If you're going to do multi-process, that's a whole other thing to talk about. And then always remember that when you make any changes, up here up top, it says folder like FT5 or whatever your printer name is, modified. You want to hit update profile. If you were to close Simplify 3D and not hit that, I cannot guarantee that the settings that you changed are going to be in there. They might not be. So always be aware of that. And always remember, when you print different filaments, go ahead in here, update each of these. You can call different PLAs. I can call this Hatchbox, Hatchbox PLA. Whoops, that's Hatchbox Pal. Anyways, I can call that whatever you want to call it for each different type of filament you have and save that in there so you can always remember your settings. Now, even settings change to different color of filament, so please remember that as well. There's a lot of diff there's a lot of things to remember when it comes to 3D printing, and this is your first step into understanding how Simplify 3D works with your FolgerTech FT5. Again, this was specifically for the FT5, but a lot of these things that I talk about, you can use in other printers, but I'm mainly focusing on that one right now. Okay, and once you have all this configured, we're gonna hit import, Go ahead and pick anything you want to pick. We're just going to pick Chase here. It's a cookie cutter. Now, if you look at it, here it's straight. Here it's backwards. So double-click your model. You're going to want to rotate this 180 degrees. And this actually is upside down, so 180 on this as well. And then go ahead and hit center and arrange. And bam, it pops that right up to the front. And now you're looking at the front of your model. Sorry, this isn't the greatest example, but it's especially big when you're doing like a bust or something like that. You don't want to be looking at the back of the head the entire time you're doing the bust print. So you want to flip that around so you can see all those juicy details of your print, especially if you're doing time lapses using Octoprint, Astroprint, or using a GoPro like I do. You want to keep those kind of things in mind. I don't know of a way to automatically set it so that your models import that way. I don't think there's a way to do that, but that is something just to be aware of when you're importing your models. Okay guys, so that's my quick little guide on how to configure Simplify 3D to use with the Forgetech FT5. I do hope this helped you out. I hope I showed you the things that you need to calibrate and always remember you have to calibrate before you do anything when you change filaments, when you change build plates, if your uh, bed level is off, always be sure to recalibrate and check all of your settings every time. If you do that, you will have excellent prints coming off this printer every single time. That is an absolute guarantee. It doesn't actually matter the slicer. It matters on what your knowledge level with that slicer is. And I do hope that this kind of helps you open your eyes to Simplify 3D and why I think it's awesome. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Uh, you can help me out, like the video, subscribe down below. If you want to, help me out via Patreon. Uh, if you don't want to spend any money down below, there's some affiliate links that you guys can check out to use to help support my channel. All of that kind of helps me make content like this. So I really appreciate everything you guys do, even if it's just to watch the video. So until next time guys, happy printing.